Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Greywell in Hampshire. It's about five miles to the east of Basingstoke and about one and a half miles to the west of Odium. And we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular walk starting and finishing in the village. And we'll be initially heading uh, in a northerly direction following an old canal. We'll be coming across uh, remains of a castle and then we'll be coming back through a wonderful nature reserve. We'll pass an old mill. We'll be seeing a church and a pub as well. So there's plenty to see. Now, many of you will uh, know the series of books by uh, Arthur Mee and his King's England uh, books. Um, his one on Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, which was published in uh, the 1930s, described Greywell as well, many of its houses might have come straight from a fairy story. They bulge out, they lean over, and still the old timbers somehow manage to hold them up. Well, as we're about to find out, I think he's absolutely spot on. Let's go. Well, I've parked my car by the roadside uh, in a road, I think it's called The Street, and made my way to the church, which is just behind me here. It's the Church of St Mary's. Now, there was a church here at the time of the, the Doomsday Book in 1086, but a new church consisting of a chancel, nave and tower was built in around 1200, but only the original nave remains. There is a 13th century Norman chancel and north door. The tower was rebuilt in the 17th century. I think it holds three bells. And the porch is fairly modern. Uh, there was a major restoration in 1870 and the large buttress on the tower was added in 1895. Now the one thing I want to show right by the porch here is look at these um, carvings and uh, crosses all the way uh, around the side and they believe that uh, these were probably the signatures of Greywell men who had fought or were intending to fight in the Crusades and the armies of Richard the Lionheart or Edward the First. Well, we've made our way up from the church. We're going to have a little wander through the village. This is obviously the Lich Gate, and then next to it, this wonderful building, Church Cottage, which uh, it's thought was once the priest's lodgings. But uh, it's certainly got some character with those wonderful timbers. And over the road is the, the Dower House. Okay, well, we're going to wander along this street here. And uh, it's just row after row of uh, quite exquisite properties. Look at that one there with the uh, wisteria. And the, the village. Um, has been a past winner of the uh, the best kept village in Hampshire and best small village in Hampshire and you can certainly uh, understand why and the, the the name Greywell means badger's spring or stream and it's not recorded in the doomsday book however because it was possibly considered part of the manor of odium it was originally a Saxon hunting settlement and it was known as Greewell, I think, until as recently as 1850. Now, when I was doing my research, I came across some, some old photographs of the village and one in particular caught my eye of a cottage taken in around about 1914. And I reckon it's this one behind me here, a sort of white timber frame called the old cottage. And yes, in the picture, on the old picture, the house next door has got that very distinctive roof with the angulations, so I reckon that's certainly it. It's looking quite beautiful, glinting in the morning sunshine. Oh wow, I think this is my favourite building in the village so far. The old malt house, one of 31 listed buildings in the village. And the earliest parts of the house are thought to be 16th century. 
and I read that this magnificent wisteria outside that's been held up by some rope is over 150 years old. And look at that terrific front door. Well, just before we head out the village, we'll say hello to the pub, the Fox and Goose, a 16th century inn. There used to be another pub in the village called the Royal Oak, which is just up the road in uh, Hook Road. And that closed in the 1950s and is now a private house. Well, we're now going to join the canal path and wander alongside the Basingstoke Canal. So let me tell you just a little bit of brief history about it. It was completed in 1794. It runs for 31 miles, running from uh, Basingstoke all the way to Byfleet, where I believe it uh, connects up to the Way Navigation. It was never really a huge success, and when the railways came along in the 1830s, particularly the uh, London and South Western uh, uh, railway line that ran uh, parallel to uh, much of the course of the canal, then uh, decline followed uh, soon after. But it closed uh, in the 1930s, and effectively it was derelict by the, the 1960s. Restoration started in the late uh, 1970s and in the 1990s it was reopened as a fully navigable waterway from the River Way to Greywell Tunnel, which is where I'm standing next to now. It's owned and funded by the Hampshire and Surrey County Councils and managed by the Basingstoke Canal Authority. Well, I mentioned the Greywell Tunnel I'm right by it here. Now, <laughs> it's, uh, I say the canal here looks a bit sort of full of weed and, and bunged up, and I'll explain the reason why shortly. But uh, I'll tell you a bit about the tunnel, because there's a nice information board next to it. <laughs> it was built between 1788 and 1792. It's 1,230 yards long, and apparently it was the 12th longest tunnel in the country when it was built. Now they decided to go through Greywell Hill rather than around it. The tunnel itself was closed though in 1932 after a partial collapse inside it. You could still get a canoe through there in the 1950s but it was completely blocked off when there was another major collapse. Well the fact that the tunnel is blocked off means that effectively the canal stops here. The last five miles onto uh, Basingstoke has um, pretty much all been filled in. And the reason why the water here is full of weed is because it's fairly stagnant. But as we go along the canal, it does get a lot clearer and a lot prettier. So let's start wandering along the towpath. Oh, here's the information board that I was telling you about. It gives us the full history of the Greywell Tunnel. It tells us that uh, it's now home to one of the biggest winter roosts for bats in the UK. The further we walk along the, the towpath, the more the canal becomes much more clearer. And it really is quite a pretty little walk. You can see here what I mean by getting uh, slightly more clearer. Plenty of opportunities for dog dips <laughs> along the side of the bank. You can hear the birds twittering away. And uh, plenty of fish in there, enjoying the flies that are about and uh, plenty of wild flowers as well either side of the, the towpath particularly I've seen loads of um, yellow wild iris well I'm filming mid-June and it is quite warm but uh, certainly a good excuse to have a, a dip <laughs> now sir so, are there any fish in there a good look round. <laughs> good boy. Well, this is obviously a key part of the canal. You've got some buoys across the uh, 
the water there on the right hand side um, reeds and a lot of green weed and then on the left hand side it's all clear so I'm guessing this is where the, the navigable part of the uh, the canal actually starts and uh, yes just in front of me there's uh, what looks like a turning area for barges and speaking of which looks like there's a barge moored on the bank over there well now this is quite interesting in that we've got a river that actually goes underneath the canal so this is the river Whitewater that rises not too far away from here between uh, Upton Grey and Greywell in the south. It's about 12 miles long and flows northeast and is a tributary of the river Blackwater which in turn flows into the river Loddon which in turn flows into the river Thames. But as you can see there's the river and if I uh, turn the camera slowly around it goes underneath the, uh, the towpath here and then underneath the canal and then reappears on the uh, the far side we will be meeting it on the uh, the homeward leg actually and uh, it is a chalk stream one of just over 200 in the world I was reading with 85 percent of them in the south of England now just to the side of the canal on the northern side are the remains of Odium Castle which is one of only three fortresses built by King John during his uh, reign what was it the uh, early 1200s and it was chosen by him as he visited the area in 1204 and it lay halfway between Windsor and Winchester it was built between 1207 and 1214 on 20 acres of land it had a two-story stone keep and a square moat and the stronghold also had a king's house. Now in 1215 it was either from here or Windsor Castle that King John rode out to Runnymede, a meadow on the Thames about 20 miles west of central London, uh, to attach his seal to the Magna Carta. The castle was actually captured by the French in 1216 when uh, there was a garrison of only 13 inside. It was used as a prison in the 13th and 14th centuries but by the 15th century it was used only as a hunting lodge and by 1605 it was described as being a, a ruin. But the only remains now are part of the octagonal keep and uh, outlying earthworks. The most southerly corner of the moat survives in the form of a small overgrown pond on the opposite side of the canal from the, the rest of the castle. Now, it looks as though you used to be able to go inside the castle but they've, they're fenced it off through health and safety I guess, falling masonry perhaps. But what they have is a little information board here and a sort of plastic screen that if you go behind and look through it um, you can have an idea of what uh, it originally looked like. Now it's a very bright sunny day and the sun's in that direction so I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work but I'll give it a go anyway. So the idea is you look through the screen, get down below and, and line it up and uh, Bob's your uncle. Now during my research for the walk I was reading that apparently sometimes here you can hear voices at night and singing, minstrels playing lutes. I think we'll move on. What a fascinating castle. Okay, we're going to continue heading along the side of the canal on the towpath and we're actually on the um, Three Castles Way which is a 60 mile long distance path that uh, effectively goes from Windsor to Winchester via Odium Castle. Well we've now come to an important part of the walk just by a lift bridge. In fact it was originally a, a swing bridge until uh, 1988 I think it was when it was converted to this powered lift bridge and I think it's the only one of its type on the canal. Now if you're feeling adventurous you can carry on a little bit further along the canal um, I know 800 yards or so and you'll come to a, a bridge go under it and then round and over the top of it through uh, North Warmborough um, 
There is a little of a, a busy B road, but effectively it just adds another, I don't know, maybe mile or so onto the walk, but it brings you out um, back onto the other side of this bridge. So <laughs> we're gonna take the easy option and just go over the bridge and then start walking back along the other side of the canal for about 200 yards or so before heading southwards over some meadows. Well, we've said goodbye to the canal and now heading southwards across this quite exquisite meadow. Beautiful, just completely left um, to wildlife and wildflowers. I was, I was about to say it's very peaceful. You can just about hear the M3, which runs uh, to the north of here, not that far away, but nevertheless, it's a lovely, uh, lovely little path to follow. Well, we're now making our way through the Greywell Moors Nature Reserve. It's about 13 hectares. It's uh, run by the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust. And it's well known for sedges, rushes, mosses and uh, liverworts. And I'm right by a, a memorial stone dedicated to the memory of E.C. Wallace eminent botanist. I'm afraid I don't know too much about him other than his name was Ted. Ah, just looking across the nature reserve here. The fen is fed by a series of natural springs which form where cracks in the chalk bedrock below allow water to bubble up from, uh, from aquifers. Very, very peaceful. Right, we're going to continue along. It's a fairly straight route for about a mile on this part of the walk. Well, if you're going to be doing this uh, walk and going to be following this route from the video, which I know a few people do, this is a, an important little uh, junction. We've been coming through that nature reserve dead straight in a sort of, well, I'd say, uh, what, southwesterly direction. And then we've come to this little junction of footpaths and we now start heading northwards or northeast. Um, not quite double backing on ourselves, but nearly. Again, it's on a proper footpath, very much on the homeward leg now. Oh, isn't this beautiful? I so say we are heading back to the church now, but we've got this quite alluring bit of water on my left. I'm guessing this is uh, connected up to the uh, river that we saw earlier. And then just further in the distance there is Greywell Mill, which is our next destination. Uh, just in front of me here is Greywell Mill. There's been a mill on the site since the 1600s, but the present building dates from the 18th century and it's reported to have been still working in 1935. Isn't it pretty with the white roses outside. You can hear the water gushing through and I think yes through here you can still see the old wooden water wheel. Isn't that brilliant? Well we're nearly back at the church now following this uh, path 
right by that river that will eventually um, go back underneath the canal we saw earlier along. But this really is quite gorgeous and uh, loads of um, butterflies, damselflies and dragonflies and I can see quite a few fish as well and the birds twittering away in the background. Beautiful, really is. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do our end scene back at Odium Castle. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do make a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had another super walk today. <laughs> the weather's been glorious and we've seen so much. Obviously the castle, the canal, the nature reserve, a lovely place to visit. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. <laughs> Good boy.